Hello everyone, this is Jay Neville, how's it going? So this is video two of my Aruba AOS CX Basics series. In the first video, we set up uh, an 8320 and we upgraded the code via the GUI. And in this one, we're going to continue with the configuration and create a management network. Let's have a look at the design then. So I put this slide together. So this is logically what it will look like. I'll go for the laser pointer. Okay, so we've got our 8320 here and we are connected via the uh, interface management. So it's the front port, out of band management port there, uh, which is connected to my Aruba 2930F, which is acting as the default gateway. This is just my home lab uh, network and that is uh, dual stacked. So it's 192.168.50.0 slash 24 and 2001 db 8 a 50 slash 64 and then off of that we have a windows server which is running my dns obviously makes things a lot easier if you've got dns running on your network especially if you've got v6 or those longer addresses rather than typing those out you just put type out the names for your nodes on your network and we also have an Ubuntu server, which I fired up for NTP. Now, NTP is good to have running in a CX environment because it helps with the NAE uh, analytics to make sure everything is synchronized. OK, so that's logically. Physically, it just looks like this. So we've got the 8320 connected into the Aruba 2930F, and that's connected into a Hyper-V server, which the VMs both run on. So it will logically look like that. OK. Here we are on the console of the 8320 then. I'll show you the configuration and I should mention this is different. So since I recorded the first video last week, there's been a new version of code released. So I have upgraded to that. So I'm on 10.3.40. Um, here's the basics. Now, first step. Originally, what we did is we just grabbed an IP address off of a DHCP server. But the 8320 is what is a core or an aggregation box. So you're much more likely not to use DHCP, but to statically configure that. So, you know, it always retains the same address. So I'm going to do that, statically configure the IP addresses in the default gateway. Then I'm going to turn on uh, DNS, put in the name server and then NTP. OK, so without further ado, let's go into conf int management and the command now it's not like a normal command actually like uh, for a layer 3 interface so it's not ip address it's actually ip static so this is quite different for the just the management interface and as, and another point that's different is that you don't have to put in ip or ipv6 you can just use ip static and then put in a v4 and a v6 address so this is our address. Uh, what did I go for? 201 slash 24. So that's my V4. And here is my V6. 201 slash 64. Okay, so the other thing that we need that we would normally, if you were using DHCP, I should say, you would get your default gateway from DHCP. Obviously, we're using static here, so we're not going to get that. And we need to configure the default gateway. So before that is 50.1. And again, with this command, it is the same command for v4 and v6. So we just do default gateway 2001 db8a50. And it is going to be 1. OK, now let us exit out of that. Do a show run. There you can see the commands. We've got no shut. Good. Now, what if I do a ping of the default gateway? Okay, that didn't work. Now, the reason is that the management interface is actually in the management VRF. Okay, so it's not in the default VRF of the box. It's by default in the management VRF. So if we do a ping, we have to suffix it with VRF management. And there we can ping the default gateway. So this is my A320 pinging that 2930F. And if we do the same, now it is a different command for V6. You have to do a ping uh, six. So it would be DB8A50 
and VRF management. Okay, that should be successful. It is good. Okay, so we've got that basic setup. Oh, the other thing I should do is the host name. So I'm just going to give it a simple name. This will be my A320 dash one. Okay, let's put that in. And we do a WM, that's right, mem. Okay, so the next step that I wanted to do is for my name server. So I need to configure my DNS. So it's IP DNS, here are the options. And we are gonna go for server address. I've just uh, used tab completion there rather than writing them all out. And I will go for 50 and it is door 10. And also bearing in mind that this is, remember the VRF, so we have to put in VRF management, otherwise it would be in the global and it would fail because everything's going out of that management port So it's in a management VRF. I'm only going to configure v4 for this so that I'm not just typing out all the commands twice So IP DNS server 192.168.50.10. So I've already configured my DNS server That's a, a Windows DNS server as I mentioned with some a records for what's on the network um, and another useful thing is if you, so you don't have to write out the whole of the domain name. If you configure IP DNS domain name, and this is the name of my network, actium.home, again in the VRF. Okay. Right. So let's do a ping. So Ping. Now, one of the devices, one of the servers is UB1. So I've called it just UB1. So I should be able to ping just that and not have to put in .actium.home. So I don't have to put in the full name. So fingers crossed. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right. And you can see that we've got the completion. And that's because I've added the rest of the domain name in. So it's qualified. Okay, so that's the DNS. Now we go on to the NTP. So if I do look at the clock, I think it should be, yeah, it's uh, it's quite close to it. Actually, that's because I've tried with this box, actually, uh, NTP, sorry, a few times um, as a dry run. So when I was first configuring this, it was way off. It was about four months off of the actual time. The system clock is quite close to the time that we have at the moment, but to align that, if you do a show NTP, uh, let's go, oh, excuse me, let's go status. Okay, you can see it's disabled, um, not synchronized with an NTP server. So we need to synchronize with that Ubuntu server, and you see why I've put the DNS information in first, because that means that I don't need to hard code an IP address. I can just go NTP uh, server, there we are, and put in the name. So I can put UB1 and it will be able to resolve that. We are going to go for iBurst. So one of the things about NTP is that it takes a while, especially if your clock is way off, it can take a while to synchronize. First time I did it and I was way off and I didn't use iBurst, which I'll explain in a moment, it took about an hour to uh, bring the two clocks in, in into alignment and synchronize. So we have a couple of options here. Now, what it does is it essentially sends more packets in one go. So rather than send one packet every five minutes or whatever it's configured for, it actually sends a burst of packets. So it's, I think it by default, it's eight packets for every one that it would normally send. Um, the difference between the two, between burst and iBurst, is that iBurst is just when you're not synchronized with the NTP server. So it allows you to much more quickly align the clocks and synchronize rather than waiting over time to bring them into alignment. Whereas Burst continues to do that. So I've read something that you shouldn't actually use Burst if you're going for public NTP sources, um, but iBurst is okay because it's just for that initial synchronization. So we'll stick with iBurst here and I need to go for version four, okay? I'm gonna pick version four just because. Okay, and the other thing I need to do is set NTP VRF for management. Right, what do we have here? So we have, 
NTP server, UB1, iBurst version 4, and I've turned on NTP for the VRA management, MGMT. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't actually enabled it. So it's NTP enable. There's no VRF to that, is there? No. Okay. So we hit that. Uh, we'll exit out of there and we'll do a show NTP uh, status. Okay, so you can see it is enabled. Oh, I should mention that we have authentication as well. I had a bit of trouble getting the Ubuntu server to uh, send the key. So I'll show you this. And the point is that this video is about CX configuration, not Ubuntu configuration. So authentication is in there. You turn it on there and you can add an, a key. So the key would be... Uh, you give it a key number and then you put MD5 or you put SHA1 and then against the server you can have a specific key. So what would it be? UB1, uh, key ID, one, uh, and you pick that. So one would be in there. Okay, fine. So like I said, NTP authentication is available. Let us have a look then at some more useful commands. So we've got NTP association is a good one. That gives you a lot of information. So this tells you when you last sent an NTP message to the server. You can see actually there that we've resolved UB1. So remember, I only put in UB1. That has resolved there. I'm polling every 64 seconds and this last increments. Okay, so you'll see that go up. Okay, it's three. So... Five. Okay, and when it hits 64, then it sends another NTP packet to the server. You can see my Ubuntu server there, dot .100, and actually the Ubuntu server is using the default Ubuntu NTP sources on the internet, which you can see the ref ID here. Now, if we go, we've got a star next to it. So actually, if I up arrow here, you can see there's details. So you get a lot of information in here. Um, Let's expand that up. And so it gives you the keys there, fine. Uh, and the one we're looking for is the star as presently used as the primary refer reference. So we're synced to that. So that's good. And you can see this much easier. Uh, we're in a kind of brief layout there. You've got NTP enabled, system time, fine. And we've got the synchronization to time. Okay, so UB1, starting two, uh, poll interview, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the configuration then. So we have our static interface configured here with a default gateway. I configured the domain name so I don't have to put in the fully qualified name for any kind of queries or pings, etc. Uh, we've got the server name for my DNS server in VRF management. I've turned on NTP in the VRF management and I have put the name of the server in with iBurst and I've selected version 4. Okay, so that's it for this short video. Um, like I said, it's just for the basics, which I hope you find useful and sometimes I know this kind of thing gets overlooked in tutorials as they go for the more advanced options it would say. So if there's anything that you would like to see leave me a note in the comments. But that's all for now. My name is Joe Neville. Thanks for watching and goodbye.